to determine the path difference for waves traveling from two slits to a common point on a screen. If the screen is a large distance away, bigger with the distance between the slits, little d, then the angle theta and the path L is nearly the same for each. The difference pattern in the figure. Simple trigonometry shows it to be d sine theta. Right? Our path difference is just our opposite sine theta, where d is the distance between the slits. To obtain constructive interference for a double slit, the path difference must be an integral multiple of the wavelength, or d sine theta equals n times lambda. For n equals 0, 1, negative 1, 2, you get constructive. We would call n the order of the interference. So in your data booklet, you are given this relationship in topic 4.4, constructive interference, path difference equals n times lambda. Destructive interference, path difference equals n plus one half lambda. All right, on to a practice problem. Suppose you pass light from a helium neon laser through two slits separated by 0 0.01 millimeters and find the third bright line on the screen is formed at an angle of 10.95 relative to the incident beam. What is the wavelength of the light? What color light should this be? The third bright line is a third order constructive interference, which means that n equals 3. We're given little d to be 0 0.01 and theta to be 10 equal, theta equals 10.95 degrees. The wavelength can then be found using the equation d sine theta equals n times lambda for constructive interference. These are bright fringes, so this is constructive interference. Therefore, the equation is d sine theta equals n times lambda. Remember, this d sine theta is your path difference. By solving this equation for wavelength, we get theta equals d sine theta times n Plug in your numbers, and you're going to get 6.33 times 10 to the negative 7 nanometers, or 633 nanometers. If you messed it up, check to make sure you're in degrees. Degrees only and less in rads. So, the second part of the question, what color is it? What color does this um, pertain to? Well, if it's 633, we're going to be red. Uh, remember, you should have an idea of these general color ranges. Know that 375 is purple, 700 is going to be red, and then RG biv in between. Oh, we did this already. Oh, let's do another one. Here we go. I'll give you a second to read through this question. If you need more time, just go ahead and pause it. All right, so first question, state one way to ensure that light incident on the slits is coherent. Oh, there's a trick in the question. These are dark fringes. Dark fringes are shown here, not the light ones. The light ones, remember, are where constructive interference happens. The dark ones are where destructive interference happens. So, one way to ensure light is coherent, you can use a single light source. Thomas Young used the sun. You could put a single slit before the double slit, or you could use a laser. Any one of those ways is going to give you a coherent light. On to B. Explain why the screen appears dark at point P. It's going to be dark at point P because it's going to arrive pi out of phase. This will produce destructive interference. For this to be true, the path difference must be half of a wavelength. And then finally, determine the change in angle when blue light of 440 nanometers is used. Uh, because we're keeping everything in the equation the same, we can just use a ratio of the wavelengths and then use that ratio multiplied by the original angle to give you the new angle 
0.003 rads. Do not forget about ratios. Uh, if you're comparing two things, use ratio. Oh, but wait. Question asks for a change in angle. That's kind of the second curveball on this question. So we're going to subtract the new angle from the old angle to get the answer of 0 0.0015 rads. I know the temptation is to stop there, but make sure at the end of every question you ask yourself, did I, did I answer the question? And let's do one last one. So we have a beam of microwaves incident on ident identical narrow slits, S1 and S2. When a microwave is placed at W, it is equidistant from the slits. A maximum in intensity occurs or is observed. The receiver is then moved towards Z along a parallel to the slits. Intensity maxima are observed at X and Y with one minimum between W, X, and Y consecutive maxima. So what that tells us is these points are now bright fringes, completely different from the last question. So be aware that you can jump back and forth. Okay. So questions. Explain why intensity maxima are observed at X and Y. Let's start there. In phase waves meet and create constructive interference. The distance from S1, S2, or S1 to Y is 1.23, and the distance from S2 to Y is 1.81. Determine the frequency of the microwaves. Frequency. All right, so we know the path difference is 0 0.62 meters just by subtracting the big one from the small one. Small one from the big one, sorry. And constructive interference is occurring. So the path difference has to be a multiple of the wavelength. In this instance, because n equals 2, w is 0, 1, 2, the path difference is twice a wavelength, or lambda equals 0 0.31 meters. Well, we have lambda. Can't find my broom. We have lambda. We know C is 3.8 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we get our frequency of 9.7 times 10 to the 9th hertz. And then C, outline one reason why the maxima have different intensities from each other. And that's because light gets dimmer as the distance from the source increases. And whenever you have slits, an opening, that opening acts as a point source for the wave. That's it. Um, go back and try these problems again on your own. I think that would be good practice. Do lots of practice with this. It's not that difficult, um, but there are some, some potential hazards you got to be careful of. So that's it. Bye.